the end of all evil, my disputes. Some of you, I am sure, are familiar with Jeremy Locke's work, The End of All Evil. For the most part, I agree with it. I was enjoying reading it, seeing the truth, until I got to page 40 in the version I was reading with the heading Money and Greed. Locke contends that money is good. Money is merely a tool but a very dangerous one. It is neither good nor evil. A hammer is a tool, and as such can be put to good, ethical, use, to insert a nail into something being built, or evil, unethical, when it is being used to bash another's skull in. The same is true with money. It can be used to facilitate the acquisition of needed things, ethical, or it can be used to control others, unethical. Money equals power, power over others. It can be used to buy people to any goal, ethical or unethical. Given that psychopaths tend to lust after power over others, it follows that they will do anything, ethical or unethical, to get and keep that power. Locke then contends that the idea of money as being evil serves authority in removing it from us. In actuality, Authority just wants to strip us of power while gaining more of it for them. Locke claims that greed does not exist amongst free people, but genetic psychopaths, at about 1% of us across the board, would surely be part of any free society. So this is not true. What is true is that non-psychopaths tend not to be greedy. Most of us apply our energy for the money we agreed upon with our employer, merely wishing we had more. Greed is a function of a lust for power and can only be facilitated in a scarcity paradigm where accounting for our energy make sense to ensure we get our fair share. The biblical quote from the King James Version, the love of money is the root of all evil, Locke claims is wrong. He claims the love of money is a function of the love of a better life, but he fails to grasp that the love of money is not the same as the desire for more money. The love of money is the desire to have the power over others that money provides. And that power over others is indeed the root of all evil, unethical behavior, authority. He claims that there is no end to the amount of improvement you can have in your life. But when psychopaths have the bulk of the money, they can ensure that you do have limits. They can control the economy and leave many out of work and homeless, like we see today. They can pick and choose who is actually successful. If you threaten them in any way, you will be broken. If you have a business that competes, they will take you out. If you have ideas that threaten their power, you will be handled. Locke goes on to say, There is no limit to humanity's ability to cure disease. If you find a cure for a disease that they profit from, that cure will disappear. Money promotes wage slavery, 
requiring us to forego our dreams in favor of finding some way to plug our energy in for the slave tokens, whether in the form of trade, barter, work exchange, shells, beads, sticks notched and split, coins, metals, bills, or electronic bits, moving the bulk of the wealth, power, upwards to those few 1% at the top. Lucky indeed is the one who is following one's dreams while being paid to do so. Most of us would rather do something else. Indeed, money is a very dangerous tool, and it is one we can put down in favor of tools that will truly free us. There are now technologies that, historically, we have never had before that would make the accounting for our energy moot. Of course, the psychopaths at the top hide and avidly suppress the key one, free energy. They know the intimate link between money and energy. They know that should free energy be available, the accounting for our energy added will become moot, like accounting for grains of sand. Robots, which more and more are taking jobs once held by us, can do all the necessary work no one wants to do. The solution proposed in this situation is universal basic income. UBI, but this is more psychopathic trickery. Such a system will give all the more control over us than at present to the psychopaths in control. See UBI on my channel for details. But what will motivate us if money is removed, you might ask? I suggest we replace it with social currency. This is not to be confused with social credit, which is controlled by authority. See who controls social credit. Rather, social currency is accounted for in our hearts and minds. It is a currency that has taken a back seat to money, but we all do things for it in our daily life. We all choose to do things not for the money we receive, but for the reputation, respect, love, admiration, caring, adoration, attention, thanks, appreciation, lauds, fame, bragging rights, etc. that we receive. Given the opportunity to follow our dreams over having to plug our energy in somewhere just to survive, most of us will seek social currency for doing what we love to do, with no money needed to live as richly as we choose. Locke makes the same error as Ayn Rand, thinking that a world with free capitalism will yield a positive result. He does say, those who have the most to take are the easiest to rob. Not quite. Those who have more than average. But the ones at the top pay little to nothing. Locke says there's no such thing as anarchy. But indeed there is. In fact, the removal of rulers, as he suggests, is anarchy. Anarchy, an, no, archi, from the Greek archon, which means ruler. No rulers is precisely the message. Perhaps he means pandemonium. One last thing he says. The only way to end tyranny is to destroy every tyrant. 
what better way to destroy them than taking away their tool to power over others? Who needs violence? Beyond these issues and a few others I may address later, I thank him greatly for the rest of the book. Authority will always be usurped by psychopaths. I would love to have a dialogue with Jeremy Locke. Search for a way as I could, I found no way to contact him. So? If any of you should know how to contact him, please let me know. Thank you for watching and considering my words. Amaterasu Solar Shill for Humanity Love Always Humanity Will Win